Hey everyone, welcome to The Drive Podcast. I'm your host, Peter Atia. Hey Bob, that's uh, that's a lot of books behind you, man. Have you read all of them or most of them? Well, thanks for noticing, Peter. I'm a, I'm a voracious reader. Uh, sometimes my appetite is too big, so I, I, I have to admit, I haven't read all of them, maybe 90%, I think at this point. That's impressive. Everything, the Thank classics, you. literature, science. Mostly the classics. You can probably <laughs> tell by the, the book binding on some of those. Uh, yeah. Hard to get them out of the shelf, to be honest. If you pull those things out, they're, they're in there so tight. Yeah. And it's good, too. Your kids can do little projects, flattening leaves and stuff like that. <laughs> yes. We've got more yes. of those it's going on. It's fun for the whole there. family. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, what do we have on the docket today for AMA number 20-something, 20 25? Yeah, 25. So... Uh, in a similar vein as some of the previous AMAs, I consolidated a bunch of questions around a particular topic, and this one is cancer screening. We've gotten a bunch of different questions related to cancer and cancer screening. Screening. So you've got, um, I'll give you a flavor, some of the questions that we've received. How do you think about cancer screening? Why and or when should I be screened? Which ones or which tests are worth getting? What do you think of liquid biopsies? How do you interpret sensitivity and specificity of tests. What do those actually mean? What are some screening tools for cancer you use in your practice? Um, there's another one. I don't know if this was a question from someone, but I found this very interesting. And this is this question is, can you discuss how you categor categorize cancers and how you screen for each? So I remember you told me this too, and it was it's pretty interesting. I don't know if everybody would suspect this uh, this answer, but cancers outside the body versus cancers inside the body. So mm -hmm. we'll get into that a little bit. Um, but I think it probably makes sense to start off with sort of in general. I know you're a, you're a strategy person. I know you love tactics too, but, uh, I think now just be to be clear, Bob, do we that. have three or four hours set aside for this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> hopefully it's the, hopefully it's the latter. Yeah. Okay, I think yeah. this, this could be a long, this could be a long one. All right. Well, um, where would you like to begin? Um, I, I think we should begin from the top. The first question was, uh, how do you think about cancer screening? Yeah. So again, I, I guess putting this in the context of what we're interested in clinically, uh, probably sounds repetitive, but longevity has these two components and they're not independent. Um, but sometimes it's helpful to think about them in isolation. Uh, so, so lifespan, health span, how do you live longer? And then how do you live better? And, you know, in many ways, cancer versus the other major chronic diseases that rob a person of lifespan, namely the atherosclerotic diseases and the diseases of dementia and neurocognitive decline, the latter two tend to go more hand in hand with the reduction in health span. In other words, by definition, when a person has Alzheimer's disease, their quality of life um, i.e. their cognition is also deteriorating. So they're experiencing both the slide in quality of life and eventually length of life. And similarly, in people that have advanced atherosclerosis, while of course it's true that people die suddenly of heart attacks who are otherwise totally healthy, a lot of times um, the reduction in you know the ability to carry out activities of daily living kind of moves more hand in hand with that. I would say that's a little less the case with cancer. Um, obviously, cancer is still a disease whose primary risk factor is age. So age is the greatest risk factor for cancer, just as it is for the other two diseases. Um, but it's also in some ways a little bit easier to think of cancer in isolation from the health span stuff, the decline in physical and mental and emotional state. So if you're trying to imagine a world in which you can live longer, as we've discussed many times previously, that means living in a world where we delay the onset of chronic disease and or have better tools to live longer with chronic disease. But you know that I much favor the former option because we have basically spent most of the um, history of modern medicine working on the latter op option uh, with very, very limited success. Um, so, okay, so let's, let's now posit for a moment that one of the pillars of longevity is minimizing mortality from cancer. So where does screening fit into this? Well, screening is one of three pieces that you would envision, right? The first piece would be, how do you prevent cancer? The second thing would be, how do you screen for cancer? 
and detect it early. And I'll explain why I think that's necessary. And the third is how do you treat it when you have it? So we can talk a lot about the former. How do you prevent cancer? Um, we've had many podcasts and we have many podcasts coming up where we're going to get into the treatments of cancer. But I want to focus this one on the prevention piece. So why do I believe that? Well, this is a controversial topic I want to say first. So not all people believe that screening matters. Um, but I think the simplest explanation for why screening matters is the evidence that suggests that a cancer that is caught earlier is easier to treat than a cancer that is caught later. That, that is caught later. In other words, if you catch a breast cancer or a colon cancer when there are tens of millions or hundreds of millions of cancer cells, your odds of treating that successfully are better than if you catch the same cancer years later when there are billions of cells. And the evidence for that basically comes from examining how patients respond to the exact same drugs in the adjuvant setting versus in the uh, met metastatic setting. So what does that mean? So the adjuvant setting is when a drug is given to a patient who has no visible cancer. So these are patients that may have had the visible cancer removed. You believe that they have microscopic disease that remains and you give them a drug like Herceptin for a HER2 new positive breast cancer. And if you compare the outcomes of those patients to the outcomes of patients who were given the exact same drug for the exact same um, phenotype and genotype of the cancer, but in the metastatic setting, there's no comparison in the outcomes. And one explanation for that may be that the more mature cancers, the ones that have been around longer, have developed more mutations. They are more difficult to treat. So um, it is therefore my belief that the more we can do to screen for cancer and catch it earlier, the better we will be. But we do pay a price for that. We pay a financial price for that. In other words, it costs money to screen early. And we pay potentially an emotional price from that because as we'll get to, and you alluded to, we have to now get into false positives and false negatives. But at a high level, Bob, that's that's how I think about this cancer or the, this, this topic around cancer screening. Yeah, I, I think it's it's telling too if you look at statistics um, on that they call it fi five year survival. So what are the odds of you surviving a a cancer? And then if you look at specific cancers like breast cancer, you're talking about. Uh, you catch it early and it's a it's a local cancer it hasn't metastasized and the statistics on that is the five year survival rates are 90 about 99% and then you 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 go to a like a distant cancer um so a metastatic breast cancer and it's closer to about 25% uh, in terms of the five year survival um and also what you alluded to as well the false positives false negatives um I said I alluded to that, so that that gets into sensitivity, specificity, um, and I didn't mention this, but you know, positive predictive value, negative predictive value, and I think it probably would be helpful to to go into that. And I think pictures are probably worth a thousand words um, in this case, in terms of looking at how good a screening tool is and determining that stuff, sensitivity, specificity, et cetera. So, do you want to start with just you want to just start explaining those things? Sure. So okay. I think it makes sense to pull up if I can pull Yeah, up we've, we've got some here. slides that we use with our patients. So go ahead and pull these up and we'll, um, we'll walk through that because um, I think if you want to take ownership over your own understanding of cancer screening, you'll, you'll definitely want to get to a point where, you know, you have, you're really facile with these, uh, with these terms. Thank you for listening to today's sneak peek AMA episode of The Drive. If you're interested in hearing the complete version of this AMA, you'll want to become a member. We created the membership program to bring you more in-depth exclusive content without relying on paid ads. Membership benefits are many, and beyond the complete episodes of the AMA each month, they include the following. Ridiculously comprehensive podcast show notes that detail every topic, paper, person, and thing we discuss on each episode of The Drive. Access to our private podcast feed, 
The Qualies, which were a super short podcast, typically less than five minutes, released every Tuesday through Friday, which highlight the best questions, topics, and tactics discussed on previous episodes of The Drive. This is particularly important for those of you who haven't heard all of the back episodes. It becomes a great way to go back and filter and decide which ones you want to listen to in detail. Really steep discount codes for products I use and believe in, but for which I don't get paid to endorse and benefits that we continue to add over time. If you want to learn more and access these member-only benefits, head over to peteratiamd.com forward slash subscribe. Lastly, if you're already a member, but you're hearing this, it means you haven't downloaded our member-only podcast feed where you can get the full access to the AMA and you don't have to listen to this. You can download that at peteratiamd.com forward slash members. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all with the ID Peter Atia MD. You can also leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast player you listen on. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies. Mm-hmm.